Perfect. Well, if it's okay with everybody, I'm going to go ahead and start the meeting. Good evening, everyone. My name is um, Marcella Solorzano, and I will be the meeting facilitator. I am a community outreach specialist, and I would like to welcome all of you, and thank you for taking the time to attend. Uh, next slide, Caitlin. Thank you. Thank you. So we have, as you heard, simultaneous audio, uh, Spanish and Chinese interpretation. Um, so it's available via Zoom. Uh, if you can please click the interpretation icon at the bottom of the screen or in your Zoom app and select the language. Um, we also have enabled the closed captions. These are the live transcript and they are turned on and you can click on, this, on the closed caption icon and you can choose to show the subtitles or hide the subtitles. And as you've heard, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So we have two goals for this meeting tonight. Uh, the first one is to present information about Comeco's request uh, or application to the Department of Toxic Substances Control to install and operate 2D watering units. Uh, the units will improve uh, the treatment of lead materials by removing liquids before these are stored in the containment building. Uh, the second goal of this meeting is to provide you information about how to submit written comments uh, to DTSC about the facility's application during the 60-day comment period that began on September 2nd. Please note that DTSC is not hosting this meeting and they are not participating. Um, however, we will provide you with their contact information, uh, specifically of the project manager who can receive uh, public comments. And, but if you have technical or clarifying questions about the information that the team's going to present tonight, um, we will try our best to answer those questions and you can post those questions in the Zoom Q&A window. And if we cannot get to a question to an answer, and um, we will make sure to forward those to DTSC. Uh, next slide, please. So where to access uh, the request in question, and it was submitted on September 2nd to the DTSC, and it's available at these uh, public uh, re uh, repository locations, two online, including uh, in our website. Uh, and uh, two uh, hard copies at um, uh, DTSC offices and in La Puente Library. So our presenters are Carl uh, Raycroft, and he's Vice President of Envar Environment, Health and Safety Compliance of RSR North America, and also Bruce Davis, and he's the Facility Manager. So with that, I will let Carl take over uh, to present the agenda and we will get to your questions at the end of this uh, short presentation. Thank you. Next slide. Thanks, Marcella, and thank you, er thank you everyone for joining on this uh, Friday evening. Um, I appreciate you participating in this uh, public meeting. Uh, we're going to start the agenda by talking, giving a little bit of project background. Um, then we're going to go into the uh, battery wrecker system overview. Um, explain our existing process flow and then how the new equipment will be operated in the battery wrecker as well and then give a brief description of each piece of equipment and then talk at the end about the benefits um, associated with the equipment. Uh, next slide please. Um, so there has been some activity with this project regarding a couple different types of permit modifications so I wanted to provide some background in an attempt to clarify and explain the permitting process. Um, the City of Industry facility, Quimeco City of Industry facility, is permitted by the DTSC to handle hazardous waste. In order to make changes to the operation, the facility needs to apply for a permit modification. Because the dewatering equipment that we're talking about today that we are installing is an environmental benefit to the facility, the regulations allow Cometco to request a temporary authorization to install and operate the equipment for a period of 180 days until a perm permanent permit modification can be applied for or obtained. So in February, February of this year, Cometco sought 
temporary authorization from DTSC to install and operate these units on a temporary basis. DTSC approved our request in April and we operated equipment for a short period of time. An appeal was filed in May challenging DTSC's granting of that temporary permit authorization. So pending resolution of this appeal, which is still pending, Quimetco has ceased operation of these units. Um, so the purpose of today's meeting is now we're submitting the full class two permit modification to DTSC seeking permanent approval to operate this, these new pieces of equipment. Um, and as part of this, the permitting process, uh, we're required to um, present the equipment and, and have a uh, public meeting to discuss the equipment. And that's why we're all here today. Uh, next slide, please. This is a aerial view of the facility at City of Industry. The facility, if you're not familiar with Quimetco, we recycle lead-based batteries and other lead-bearing materials for purposes of reclaiming lead and other recyclable materials in the process. Quimetco currently recycles over 10 million batteries each year. Most of these batteries are generated within the state of California. Quimetco is the only lead battery recycling facility in the Western United States, and it operates under the strict regulatory guidelines of the state of California. California regulations for operating a secondary lead smelter are the most stringent in the world. Quimeco operates two other lead battery recycling facilities in the United States. Besides the one, besides the facility in the city of industry, we also have a facility in Indianapolis and a third facility in Middletown, New York. All facilities are very similar. Uh, they're known specifically for their unique pollution control equipment on the process emissions called a wet electrostatic facilitator, also known as the WESP. The WESP was first installed at the City of Industry facility um, to meet and exceed the strict California regulatory air emission uh, standards. Uh, and Caitlin, I don't have control of the arrow. I'm assuming, I don't know if, if you look at the aerial view, the brown building in the center. And Caitlin, I don't know if you can move the arrow to that brown building in the center. And I don't know if you can see that. That is right, right there. That's the battery record building. And just to the south of that is the west, where you see all the big process vent that goes into that. That's the west, the wet electrostatic uh, precipitator. So the battery wrecker is where this equipment's going to be installed and right to the left of that, the battery wrecker is the containment building. Um, and we're, we'll talk a little bit about the containment building as well. But I wanted to explain that the process buildings, both the battery wrecker and the containment building are, are under negative pressure. So many of you may be familiar with like a hospital emergency rooms that are normally under positive pressure to keep germs out from entering into the emergency room. Well, under negative pressure, the facilities are, the buildings are designed to keep all contaminants in the facility and process them through available pollution control equipment, including HEPA filtration units that maintains the negative uh, pressure on these buildings. And HEPA fil filtration units are essentially high efficiency particulate air filtration units. So that's what is used for maintaining the negative pressure um, on a continuous basis while the facility is operating. Um, I also wanted to point out uh, around the facility, you see four circles, one, two, four, and five. And those are the name, those, that's a, basically the naming protocol that we have for the fence line monitoring equipment that operates 24 seven around the facility and it continuously monitors um, air emissions on the fence line for arsenic and lead in accordance with the California regulations. Um, and I think that's all I wanted to point out on this drawing. And we can go to the next slide, please. Now I'm gonna turn this over to Bruce to talk a little bit more about the battery wrecker and the individual pieces of equipment um, Bruce is our plant manager, um, and he will go through in more detail 
um, explaining um, the equipment. Bruce, you're up. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Carl. Uh, as Carl mentioned, um, plant manager at the facility. I've been working at Comeco since 2007. And my job is to make sure that our employees are safe in their day-to-day -day duties and that the facility operates safely for us and the community. We employ 275 full-time employees, 197 of which are union workers. And actually we employ many second and third generation employees, people whose fathers or in, in one case, a grandfather worked for the company and uh, the successive generations have worked for us. So tonight I'll be describing some improvements we'll be making to our process in recycling batteries. This is specifically for the, what we call our battery record system. And in the battery record, we process spent lead acid batteries by crushing the batteries to allow recovery of the following materials, plastic, metal comp components, which we call record material, and sulfuric acid. Currently, the metal components are stored in a permanent containment building for drainage of liquid prior to feeding the material into our smelting furnaces to recover the lead. The proposed the watering equipment, <clears throat> excuse me, will remove liquid from the metal components before we store it in the containment building. So this proposed equipment consists of two units, the compression auger and the centrifuge. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Now our dewatering process, uh, currently we have the material that's crushed, the batteries are crushed, goes into what we call a sink float system. And that's designed to separate plastic, acid, and the what we call the record material, the metal components. So currently the record material is taken out of this system and direct it into the containment building where it'll drain and then it'll be fed to the furnaces to recover the lead. For the proposed process, we'll take that material from the battery crushing, the sink float system, and process it through the compression auger and then the centrifuge. And then the material will be conveyed into the containment building before it's fed to the furnace. Next slide, please. So the compression auger is a unit that, that is designed to receive the wet lead-based record material from the sink float system and compress the material to remove liquid. It's designed to compress the record material to separate liquid by reducing the area between the auger flights. If you've ever used a garlic press, squeeze the garlic to get the juice out of it. It's a similar concept. The liquid that is removed by the compression auger will flow to our acid recovery operation of the battery record. The solids, the record material, will discharge to the centrifuge. This compression auger will operate within the existing battery record building, which is already permitted by DTSC for the storage and treatment of hazardous waste. Uh, this building features secondary containment that will capture any liquids that may be released from the compression auger, and it operates under negative pressure, as Carl mentioned earlier, to control potential fu fugitive emissions from operations within the building. Next slide, please. The second unit is the centrifuge. It's a unit designed to receive material from the compression auger and spin the material to further separate additional liquid <clears throat> from the lead-based record material. It's designed to spin the material to further separate the liquid using centrifugal force. Analogy would be your washing machine. When it finishes up and it's spinning the liquid out, it's the same concept. The liquid that's recovered will be sent to the acid recovery operation of the battery record and the solids will discharge to the containment building. 
the centrifuge will operate in the existing containment building, which is also, as the battery record building, permitted by the DTSC for the storage and treatment of hazardous waste. This building also features secondary containment to capture any liquids released from the centrifuge and operates under negative pressure to control potential fugitive emissions from operations within the building. Next slide, please. Carl, you're on mute. I'm on mute, thanks Bruce. <laughs> So I wanted to just highlight the environmental benefits for the proposed equipment. And I think it's pretty clear from Bruce's explanation. Currently, the, the uh, record material that's transferred from the battery wrecker um, is discharged and stored in piles in the containment building. Um, the, the wrecker material has uh, free liquid that drains across the floor to a sump before it's recycled and reused um, back in the process in the battery wrecker. So the proposed equipment is basically designed to remove that free, free liquid from the record material before it goes into the containment building and ensure that the liquid is maintained in a, an enclosed system. So everything will be piped and pumped versus um, running across the floor in the containment building. The compression auger and centrifuge equipment are enclosed and they are designed to remove liquids um, in an enclosed system. The equipment will be operating. Uh, the equipment while operating will ensure that free liquids are removed from the record material prior to storage in the containment building. So there's an obvious environmental benefit to this equipment. Um, next slide, please. And Marcella, I don't know if you want to wrap it up. Uh, yes. Thank you, Carl. Um, the DTSC uh, public period for this uh, project began on September 2nd and it ends on November 2nd. Uh, so the best way to submit your comments uh, is in written form via mail and via email. Uh, so I've put, uh, we have put Parisha's uh, Koshraviani's contact information here and her email address as well. So for the, until November 2nd, um, you can access the request uh, in the public repositories, review it. And if you have specific comments for DTSC, you can send them to Parisha directly. Um, they, they will ensure that your comments are addressed, considered before they make a final determination. Um, so with that, we're happy to answer questions if you'd like to use the Q&A um, window on your Zoom uh, app and Zoom portal, and uh, we'll go through those. Thank you. I, I don't see any open questions just yet. I see some questions come in, thank you. Uh, I have a question for Carl. Carl, uh, can you please explain the environmental benefit? And we can go back to the slide, Caitlin, please. Thank you. Sure, so if you go back one slide, uh, essentially the current operation um, is designed with a containment building where the material, the record material is currently stored in piles and the liquid drains off uh, in the containment building across the floor and is uh, recovered um, in the containment building. The proposed equipment will capture all the liquid before it enters, the free liquid before it enters the containment building and 
ensure that the liquid is contained within the enclosed system. So the compression auger and the centrifuge, any liquid remote re removed from those pieces of equipment will be contained within piping and it will be pumped back into permitted tanks and pumps and, uh, and, and systems. Good, thank you. And also there's a question on how can the recorded presentation be accessed? Uh, we will put a link up on our website uh, and give us maybe until Tuesday to do so. Yes. I see another question um, for Carl. Um, why are we going through a class two permit modification if uh, the equipment is already installed? That's a good question. Um, well, the equipment was installed under the temporary permit authorization <clears throat> because of the envir environmental benefit of the equipment with the ultimate plan of completing the uh, class two permit modification, which is what we're doing now. When the temporary authorization was appealed, uh, the equipment was uh, ceased, is no longer operating, and the uh, before we could install the equipment, the centrifuge has not been installed. Um, the compression auger uh, was installed and only operated for a short period of time until the appeal um, was put in place. Thanks, Carl. Just a few seconds while I get the questions. Let's see. And I just wanted to remind you too that if you have specific questions for the DTSC, um, and if you want to make those part of the record and would like to receive an official uh, response, please uh, address them to DTSC directly. Let's see, I have one. Oh, uh, Carl, here's a question. Why wasn't the public informed about the installation of this equipment before it was installed and began operating? <clears throat> well, um, as, as part of the temporary authorization um, permitting process, there was a notice issued to the public um, regarding the installation of the equipment and the approval for temporary authorization of the uh, of the equipment um, so the public was noticed notified and i can add to that we the mailing list for the project is about includes about 4000 addresses and there's also an email list and a public notice was placed in the newspaper in spanish and in english Thanks, Marcella. For both the temporary authorization and yes. permit modification request. Just a few seconds. I'm getting more questions. I see there's a question that the application lists a number of attachments that do not seem to be in the packet. Um, I guess I would, it, it depends where, I, I would like to know whether that was accessed uh, via Envira store or in the Quimetco website, because I can check our website and make sure that the attachments two and three 
uh, particularly uh, if they're missing. And I can definitely check on that on, on our website. Can that question be more specific on what attachment? And Marcella, I, I think I've looked at our website, the posting and all the uh, attachments were there, but we can verify and we can check with some of these, the questions are gonna, uh, are more relevant to uh, DTSC and we'll need to verify with DTSC before they posted the, um, the right. permit mod that all the attachments are included. Sounds good, yes, we can definitely check on that. Great. Well, it looks like we have answered the questions that applied uh, to the technical nature of, of the presentation. And it, it looks like the rest of the questions um, are for DTSC or for the DTSC process. Um, so if there's any, yes, so, so that you know too, I don't know if you heard at the beginning of the meeting there, we have a core reporter as well. Um, but this meeting is being recorded and we will make it available uh, on our website. And um, with that, I want to thank you again on behalf of the team for joining us tonight. Um, and uh, we wish you have, that you have a good weekend. Uh, and thank you for attending. Yep. Thank you very much. I appreciate everyone's attendance. Yes. Thank you.